next day, the autopsy results come out and they um, answer the, these kind of questions. Uh, how many bullet wounds? And most important, did my loved one suffer? Pain and suffering is concern. And uh, we can answer those questions on uh, day one on the basis of the injury, such as when there's a damage to the brain, bullet wound to the brain, that causes immediate loss of consciousness at that point. Uh, and telling that to a family can often be uh, very um, uh, helpful at a trying time for the family. So that's why we were called. I must say, when we were called, uh, Mr. Crumpet said they'd been trying to get the federal, the FBI, the federal government involved uh, without without success at that time, and that's why they wanted me to come in. And shortly after we started the autopsy. Whoops, Channel 5, I'm sorry. Uh, after we started the autopsy, uh, uh, then it was announced that they were going to do another autopsy, which is fine, because uh, it shows the interest and the concern the federal government has in this kind of death. And you're here all here because many black men die uh, of accident, of homicide, uh, every day in this country, and rarely, and never, as far as I recall, has the President of the United States got involved. The only other time the President got involved, I remember, was Charles Manson uh, did his thing, and you guys weren't born in those times, and he was very upset by it, but not in a civil rights way. So I think that, uh, you know, uh, understanding what's happening, and one thing I want to add, add here, though, Mary Case is the chief medical examiner in St. Louis County, and she's a very excellent uh, forensic pathologist, and I'm sure her work will turn out to be very, very excellent when it's released. But again, it hasn't been released yet, and the family wants to, to know certain simple questions that so far we've been able to answer. Um, Sean uh, Parcells is, has... Um, uh, been uh, instrumental in the autopsy evaluation. I don't know if you want to point out anything on the uh, on the sure. um, anatomy of the gunshot wounds. That uh, that beautiful drawing. Uh, first of all, I'm Professor Sean Parcells, and I would like to thank everyone for bringing me into this case. And we're here for the family to answer questions about what happened to Michael Brown. And I want you guys to understand that when an autopsy is done, that we look at the body in an anatomical position. This is the anatomical position. Piecing things together. Dr. Bodden? Yeah, the, the attorneys behind me thought that there might be a question among you. Uh, we're here to see the young look. Are any of these wounds inconsistent with the witness account that Michael Brown was shot while rushing the police officers? Uh, there, there, there could be consistent with his going forward or going backward, but they're for the front, and if he was shot going forward, uh, uh, he would collapse uh, right away. The, the uh, problem, yeah, so it, it's possible. There are a number of different uh, possibilities to, to that point. Can you tell how far away the Yeah, the question was how far away, yes. We can tell a certain distance. We can tell the distance from the muzzle of the gun to the body or, and the body's clothing. Uh, if there's, the closer the weapon is to the body, the more powder residue there'll be on the body and the skin and the clothing. In this instance, there's no uh, gunshot residues on the skin surface, uh, so that the muzzle of the gun was at least one or two feet away, the muzzle at the time of discharge. It could have been 30 feet away, it would be the same thing. But in order to be firm about that, we also have to look at the clothing, which we haven't had the opportunity to look at because sometimes the clothing can filter out gunshot residues. Doctor, can you say how many times he was actually shot? Yeah. There are six bullets struck him. 
six bullets struck and two may have uh, re-entered uh, and three bullets were recovered at the first autopsy for, according to our report uh, there were the, the two head wounds and the bullet in the chest stayed in the body and were removed at the first autopsy uh, from our examination of the body one of the things that's going to be important for us, for us to see is the x-rays uh, the, the old black and white x-rays that will show where the bullets were at, before the autopsy was started. And that's documented in x-rays taken before an autopsy in a gunshot wound case. Do you know those x-rays exist? Uh, yes, uh, I, I spoke with uh, Dr. Uh, 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 Mary Case and they did, the, they did all the proper x-rays, photographs, and uh, they should be available at some time, uh, whether today or whether three or four months from now, often depends on what the prosecutors want to do. That is, Mary Case could have told you everything I'm telling you on day one, uh, but often in an investigation like this, it's not uncommon for prosecutors not to want information re released. But I think in my experience, when that happens, it only gets the community more upset. Are you a member of the media? Only the media. Only the media. Two things. Uh, access to the code. I think at some point, we should, uh, the defense should have access to the clothing. That depends largely, the clothing is now, from Dr. Case's uh, uh, advice, in the Los Angeles, St. Louis uh, County Police Agency, normally, they're gonna be looking at it. Um, it's up to them when the defense, uh, uh, not defense, the families, uh, uh, ought to, uh, will have access to it, so but at some time, there will be access to it and the results. As far as the other part of the question was, uh, any signs of a struggle? Uh, there weren't uh, signs of a struggle. In talking about a struggle, one of the things that the attorneys have also asked for is the medical uh, examination of the officer uh, who uh, was in a struggle. So signs of uh, injury to the officer, to to um, uh, uh, Michael Brown uh, are both needed. One thing is that there are abrasions around the right side of Mr. Brown's uh, face, rubbing against the ground, which happened, as best we can tell, when after the gunshot wounds, he fell flat down unprotected and got those abrasions. Otherwise, uh, no evidence of a struggle and it will be important in evaluation of the case for, every, for the medical exam and the FBI for the defense, uh, not defense, the uh, uh, family to uh, see what happened to the officer. Yeah, you got over here for a second. Our autopsy that we did. The, the, the first autopsy at, at the uh, county medical examiner, second one was at the uh, Arthur, Lane, Arthur Lane funeral home where the body was delivered for uh, burial uh, and we did that in the uh, office and it was about three, four hour autopsy, a uh, re-autopsy. Well, we can't answer that until we see the county. I'm, I, my impression, be having done this some 50 years or so, is that they're going to be very similar. Uh, I think they're available now. The autopsy records are available now. When it's going to be released is probably up to the prosecutor. Right here. Right here. Excuse me. Right here. Well, the, the, the autopsy itself can is it consistent with police or 
or uh, witnesses. Uh, there are many different witness testimonies. Many of them uh, seem to line up uh, uh, in one direction, some in another direction. Uh, right now, till we get more information, till we get from a forensic science point of view, can't distinguish, can't make a, a definite judgment. This is, uh, now the lawyers who've interviewed witnesses, we haven't interviewed, we don't interview witnesses, uh, uh, may be impressed with some witnesses who, see, who seem more, uh, uh, more uh, uh, trustworthy than others, and as the police are doing too. This is what juries are supposed to do. Juries are supposed to look at the witnesses and tell who's telling the truth and who isn't. But lawyers do that all the time. And so they, they uh, have more information than we have. But right now, from the science point of view, we can't uh, uh, determine which witness, and they're all different kinds of uh, uh, observations made, uh, is most uh, consistent with all of the forensic findings. Uh, Dr. Uh, Jim, uh, uh, Dr. Dr. Doctor, you mentioned transparency, you mentioned scientific information, yeah. and you mentioned standards. Was there any investigative reason, any scientific reason why this information could not have been released after day one? Is there any reason well, no. This is a judgment based on, and this is one of the things that the family was concerned about. Even though we know when an autopsy is done, when any autopsy is done that you guys go to, 95% of the information is, is available right away. Stab wounds, gunshot wounds, things like microscopic slides and toxicology, which may be of value, but don't determine the cause of death. Whether or not a decedent has cocaine on board uh, might be of value value to see uh, uh, why an incident, an incident happened, but it has nothing to do with the cause of death. So I think that uh, my impression is that the, the uh, like in most medical examiner's offices, when an autopsy is completed, the medical examiner can release it immediately, or most of it, uh, pending the prosecutor's uh, wishes, because the prosecutor says that that's going to interfere with our investigation, then medical examiners uh, 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 hold up, and uh, the families may not know for weeks and months uh, the kind of questions we're talking about. Two, two more. Thank you. Thank you. Two more. Thank you. Can you speculate on what the word of those I don't think we can, we cannot speculate exact order of gunshot wounds. That forensically, that's impossible. However, Dr. Bodden, I do feel because of the two gunshot wounds to the head, indicating that Mr. Brown was bending over as they were coming down, that those two shots were most likely the last two to occur to him. That's about as far as we can go. Toxicology. Toxicology uh, results have to be done by the medical examiner at the first autopsy. They get the blood and everything out. Second autopsy, no more blood and, uh, and there's been uh, uh, embalming fluids, etc. So we have to wait for the uh, medical examiner and it depends how quickly it, they're rushed. The toxicology should be able to be done in a week or, or two, but oftentimes it gets on the end of the line of all the other cases that they're dealing with and may take months, but that should be available, especially with your concern and the president's concern, it should be available uh, very soon. Well, we got a feeling that that toxicology report, like other things, will be released to you sooner than later. Uh, there was one question from a non-press person. We wanted to ask it and then we were going to... Yes, ma'am. He could have survived all the shit. That's good. I should have mentioned something. All of these uh, gunshot wounds were uh, uh, survivable, except for the one in the top of the head that went through the brain.
gets arrested, as you know, is a political district attorney decision, and it's not a forensic science decision for good or for bad. Okay. Thank you, Al. Thank you.